ex Black Stars coach Kwesia Pia is in the studio with me, and uh, we are going to be speaking on something amazing that he's doing. Before I let you know what he's doing, let's just uh, welcome into the studios. Uh, good morning, and welcome to New Day. Morning. Thank you very much for uh, uh, coming here. But we know uh, this is one of the main reasons you're here. Yeah. So just in case you did not know, there's a new book uh, that uh, you know uh, Coach Kwesia Pia has a rating. It says, leaders don't have to yell. National team coach on leading high-performing teams. So we are going to be getting an insight into what exactly is here, why this particular book at this time, and so much more. Coach, first of all, why this book? Um, in actual fact, I've been reading some books on, um, written by Alex Ferguson and um, Aswinga. Mm -hmm. And also I realize, yeah, I realize a lot of um, good points that they have in there. So I ask myself, how come most of our uh, leaders in coaching, how come they've not written anything down for us to pick something from? And many of them are dying now. Yeah. So I said it's important I put something down, so that at least um, you no, know, the young ones come in can read it those who are playing and those who are uh, coaching. And apart from that, there are a lot of points in there that um, I believe every leader or any, anyone who has uh, an association you know, or an office can also have a reader at it and uh, make sure he gets something to uh, achieve what he wants at his workplace. Mm. But I mean, you, you mentioned um, uh, Salas Ferguson as in Wenger. Were they the biggest motivation for you in writing this book? In natural fact, yeah. Um, I, especially as Wenger, because I'm an Arsenal fan. Okay, and, oh, uh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that um, their coaching style you know, was good. And you see, Alex Ferguson believes in development of yeah. the youth, and that's something that I also picked from there. Uh, always making sure he has some youth who are backing up uh, the team that he's got. Mm. But you, you mentioned as in Venga, the youth, we, we saw you at the Black Stars invite uh, a lot of players. Yeah. Um, is, it, is it the same uh, principle that you believe in and the reason you want to give chance to sometimes the unknown? Um, I think that looking at, um, this is a national team, we are talking about a national team. Yeah. The national team should not focus on only few players. The national team should always have uh, uh, three sort of teams, so that in case um, this batch is wiping off, we got a backup. You no know, youth who can who would take over. I think for some time now, um, that's something that we did not do. Okay. Uh, if you look at the five-year development plan, that um, uh, what do you call him? Uh, ben Kofi did. Okay. You know, that's why we we had a, the batch of um, ACN, Sule, John yeah. Mesa. Yeah. You know, and then we see we all got stuck with these same players for a very long time. They went to 2006, they went to 2010, and they went to 2014. Some of them. Yeah. So at uh, 2014, you ask yourself who are uh, taking over from them. Yeah. We did not prepare any uh, backup team. Um, we'll, we'll get into some of these technicalities, but briefly, mm. um, the title of this book, Leaders Don't Have to Yell, mm. is this a subtle response to those who criticize you the most in this country? I mean, um, th 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 there are lots, there's a lot of talk out there about how you as a leader mm. don't speak, you don't, we don't hear from you. Mm. Is this a response to them? Oh, this is, I would say, um, my lifestyle, you know, and lifestyle, you know, the piece, the title of the book, you know, it tells you that if you're a leader, it's not always that you shout. Or you sh if you, you even want to shout, <laughs> it should be different. Like on the pitch, as a coach, sometimes you need to shout at someone for him to listen. Yeah. But that does not mean yelling at him a lot or you know, shouting him uh, without purpose. You know, because um, I was setting an example, and I said that um, the only time you can even send a message across to a player mm. is when there's an infringement, when the game stops 
for a throw-in, corner kick. And that's the reason why most coaches do sit on the bench. Then they wake up at a time where they think they can send a message across. Uh, then when it's half time, that's the only, a second time that we can also send a, uh, messages across. But it's how people control their emotions. That is what maybe people want me to do, mm. which I think I know how to control my emotions. Mm. I've been playing for some years and and then you see, if you look at the managers all around, many of them can control their emotions because they know when to act. But um, a player, someone like, let's say, take a coach of uh, Atletico Madrid. Yeah, Diego Simeone. Uh, yeah. He, he, the way he controls his emotions, he will keep running and throwing his hands. And Some say coaches have to be vocal, you have to be animated, you have to show but passion. I, I ask yourself, look at the play in Europe. Yeah. Uh, in Ghana, maybe I will use Kotoko and Haas, mm. where the stadium is packed. Are you telling me that if you're talking to someone even closer to you, can you listen to you or can you hear what you're saying? You know, it's all emotions. And as I said, the only time you can send a message across is when, you know, uh, the game stops. And at that particular time, maybe if the, someone is closer to you, you can send a message to him to send it across too. Yeah. But as to messages that you think you are sending, it, can you stand here when the stadium is packed or there are full mm. people in the stadium? We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that style of yours, but mm. to your mind, um, what is the biggest takeaway from this book you've written? 380 pages and more. Mm. What is the biggest takeaway? If anyone wants to get this book, mm. what is the biggest promise of, 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 of value from this book? No, um, see, it talks about leadership and... Um, there are so many leadership qualities in it okay. and a lot of um, things that players who are playing now like invest investing their money yeah and then uh, as the coaches uh, where they need to take bold decisions you know and then um, it tells about suggestions that you know is being given that uh, if we all follow it will help our football uh, okay. in the future so, as I said, and there are so many interesting topics. Once you pick a, you start a topic, you know, I believe if someone calls you for even food, you will say, oh, wait, let me finish. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but in telling your story, of course, this is all about you mm. and uh, life experiences, your career experiences. Mm. Which of the chapters here, which of the topics here excited you the most in telling the story? Oh, um, there's this one story. Um, I think 19... I think 1983, 84, okay. we went to you Tamale. at Kotoko? At Kotoko. Yeah. I was a player then. Yeah. You, you moved to Kotoko in 82? Uh, 81, 82, 82 season. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when we went, um, we were, because uh, it was difficult then to uh, win the game at Tamale. Mm. So we were leading by two goals to one. And it was just about five minutes to the end of the game. and. There was an infringement. So I was trying to clear a ball, and our two players stepped on it. So they were also for infringement. I intentionally lied down, you know, thinking that it would waste some kind of time. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I saw the R2 supporters coming on the pitch. They came, and some held my two legs, and some held my hands. <laughs> they said, Let they started, let's throw him away. <laughs> One, two, three, and then they threw me. Outside the pitch? Yeah, the, you know, those days, supporters were just running. And that was their way of protesting your your. Yeah, they your knew thinking. that. Yeah, they knew that I was faking it. <laughs> but when I go, like, got over there, I had to speed in there, <laughs> in the pitch. Anyway, but I mean, you have you have several beautiful moments in, in your yeah, career. Yeah, yeah. Which one would you pick as the as a topmost moment for you? I think our game against um, Egypt, where we won 6-1, in, 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 in Kumasi. Kumasi. That was... Uh, That's your highlights as, as a manager? That was one of the happiest moments in my life. What, what made it so delightful? Um, because um, I knew that we had to qualify to the World Cup, you know, and um, being a Ghanaian, you know, taking this step, you know, 
And actually, when we won the sixth one, I knew we had um, qualified already. Mm. Um, also, I want to know about your co-author in this book. Um, not a lot of people will know him, Che Bafo. Yeah. Who is he? Um, and why, why him? Why did you choose him? Yeah, um, I had a friend whose name is um, Bafo. Yeah. He lives in the US. So we were discussing about writing a book, and he said he's got a friend there called Che but, uh, Yeah. So I said, what proves that he can write the book? So he told me, oh, he's written the book. So I told him to send me the book. Let me have a look. So I had a look and I thought that um, he could write it. Mm. And that's how come I got to know him. And that's how he started writing the book for us. Mm. But um, let, let's get into your career now. Um, looking, looking back at everything that you've done as a footballer and as a coach, especially as a coach, mm. what is your biggest regret? Yeah, um, for me, I've not regretted anything, any single thing. Not even returning to the Black Stars? Um, no. I think, you see, the most important thing is you being there, doing the best that you can. Yeah. And for me, I think all along the line, I did the best that I could. And then any decision that I took, you know, uh, you see in coaching, coaching is about risk taking. Okay. So every single decision that you take in taking the risk, you know, but if it goes well, fine, you thank God. But if not, you know, you learn from the decision that you took and then you carry on. Mm. But I have to regret it now. So, I mean, recently, you, um, the entire technical um, teams of the various national teams were all dissolved by the new administration of the GFA. Mm. How is your relationship like with the new administration? Um, I, I think it's better we don't talk about the new administration uh, at the appropriate time. You know. is, it, is, it, is it because you have um, some pain in there? No, no, actually. About how certain things were dealt with? Um, just that I don't want to talk about their issues you know, with me or the way they do their things. But uh, you see, as a coach, you should never think you stay at one place forever. Mm. You should always, at any given time, ha have your bag on your side. Yeah. Because if you even lose a game, the management and may decide, okay, that's the end of you. But for me, uh, I think I have done the, what I could, and for that reason, if someone is, you know, taking so, the role, you have to appreciate it and carry on. Yeah, I understand. I understand um, the sentiments and everything, but um, of course, you, it's it's a national appointment. It's it's something that um, breeds patriotism. Mm -hmm. um, are you concerned about where the Black Stars is heading after you? Yeah, yeah automatically I'm again in, and for that reason, you know. I would love that you know Ghana even goes on to win the Afghan or the World Cup, and I hope you man should and be proud and say that look, uh, these are one two players that I brought in and they've made me proud. And I believe that you know the players that we have. I'm not saying that <laughs> the new technical team should still concern on the same players because mm. they have their own philosophy. They know the kind of players that they need. You know, so, but I would be really happy if Ghana you know, uh, wins any competition. But uh, remember, uh, you're watching, uh, we are also live on 3FM 92.7. In case you're stepping out, you can uh, still follow the interview at the conversation um, on radio. It's uh, on 3FM on Sunrise 92.7. But coach, you worked with CK Akono briefly mm -hmm. before um, you left the Black Stars. Do you, do you, did you see the qualities in CK that says he can lead the Black Stars to glory? Even if you failed at doing that. No, what, what I thought was, um, again, again, as a as a country, I believe that even any time I'm not around, we should, we should we should get a Ghanaian, you know, to succeed me. Mm -hmm. So my intention was to make sure we get a lot of um, uh, coaches getting closer to the national team, you know. So I thought he was one of the uh, coaches that should. Mm -hmm be given the chance, you know, to be close to the national team. So that I didn't want a situation where uh, at the t a term of my tenure, then they would say, okay, Ole, 
maybe one or two coaches have been closer to the national team. So, but I wanted a pool of coaches to get the opportunity so that uh, at the end of it, all Ghanaians will say, okay, you should go to this man or that But man. Do, do, do you think Kurt is the right guy at the moment? Um, I wouldn't like to talk about Kurt or his management. Why is that? Uh, because they have just been given the position and yeah. you just need to give them a chance. Okay, um, so we, 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 are looking, we are looking at, we are still looking at the Black Stars, of course, it's, it's one of the biggest chapters um, in your life and of course in this book as well. Um, what, what is your word of advice to CK? Now that he's, he's gotten into the job that you just left, I'm sure you know all the dangers in there, you know all the, all the turns to take to succeed. What is the biggest advice you give to CK if you met him, if you met him this morning? Um, all what I can say is that he needs to be strong you know, to take his own decisions. As simple as that? Yeah, because um, every coach has got his own philosophy and the kind of players that he, he likes. So it's really difficult to go into the uh, technicalities. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so there are some reports that, you know, I'm sure you said in another media house that you, you said you were richer than all the Black Star players. <laughs> <laughs> Can you clarify that on this platform? Oh, it is taken out of context. I said, look, I don't know whether you're married. I am. If you're married and you've got children, let's just say you've got children, automatically, if you are able to take care of your kids, and, I mean, take care of your family, and you are happy, I see that as you being the richest man. Mm. Because um, you could, it's, it's just money doesn't mean you got money. Money is nothing because money, if you've got money and you are not happy with problems and sicknesses and stuff, you know, it doesn't make you a rich man. So I said that I'm a rich man because I am happy with my, my family and I'm a, I don't depend on anybody to take care of my family. And for that reason, that makes me a richest man. Uh, a, couple, a couple more questions and then I'll let you go. Um, looking at your time at the Black Stars, who were your biggest problems in the dressing room? Which of the players give you the biggest headache in the dressing room? Well, normally, you see, as a coach, you don't expect <laughs> all the players. Or you, even whenever you're working in a society, you should never think that everybody will tone to whatever you think or she should not have the right to say their mind so um, there could be players but it's how you also deal with them or how um, you let them know there's a lie nobody crosses but you know Jose Moreno in an interview once said that his biggest um, headache in a dressing room mm -hmm. in his entire coaching career was Mario Balotelli mm -hmm. he just could not get control on this guy mm -hmm. did you have a player like that in the Black Stars dressing room no, I actually didn't have a player who... There are some players who always tell you what it is. But you see, Ghanaians don't like that attitude. Confrontations. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's... The God's right to say whatever he thinks. But you make sure he doesn't cross a line where uh, his uh, utterances or his behavior will have effect on the younger ones who are coming up. Because once that happens, then you are encouraging them to yeah. do that as well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, did, uh, of course, you said you, you see that as a positive. Do, can you name a couple, uh, some of those players who were confrontational in a positive way? No, actually, I, I don't believe that. I think that uh, once he's a good player and once he can help the nation, it's very sort of what he does off the field. You, know, you need to find means to accommodate him. Mm. Um, also, before you leave, now you are out of the Black Stars. Um, a lot of people have, have, have known you, um, I mean, post your playing career as a coach that likes to take the big jobs. Mm -hmm. So you've been at Kotoko and a few, other, a few others, you've been in Sudan. Then from the Black Stars, are we to expect you to return to club football? If so, where? Or are you considering yourself a national team coach for the remainder of your career? Oh, um, you see, as I said earlier, as a coach, any time you should be ready for any consequence as to whether but now as at now my position um i haven't actually decided you know i will not lie to you there are some offers yeah but i was about asking you that <laughs> whether to go here or to go there or even to stop the coaching have you, know, you considered stopping 
Yes, it's very possible because I, I don't only do coaching. I have other works that I do. What, what else you do? No, I get, I do so many things. Sure I do. You want hmm? to know what, what 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 are the other other things you do? No, I, I, are you into farming? Are you are you a music producer? We want to know what 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 else is there to Kwesi Api aside football? No, uh, if you read the book, you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that information in the book, yeah. where, won't we? Yeah. Okay, but um, do you consider yourself the biggest coach in Ghana at the moment? No, 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 no. I think there are other coaches who are also good, um, or maybe better than me. But I believe that, you know, people should be given opportunities. You know, the may fact that I'm out of the national team should not close the doors to... Uh, other people who can also do it for the nation. Are you still owed by the GFA? Um, I wouldn't like to go in there. Mm. Mm. Okay, but um, on this particular book, I mean, a lot of people are excited that finally they get to hear, uh, you know, Kwesi um, It's It's quite voluminous. It's over almost 400 pages, this particular book. Uh, leaders don't have to yell. Um, it's, I was asking Coach here if it was a subtle way of uh, communicating to the public that he does not have to scream to send his uh, points across. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that uh, communication is in here, how to, to lead without screaming. Yeah. Uh, no, I believe that even here, you got some workers are working with you. And automatically, if you, every single day you come in and you start yelling at them, you know, or shouting at them. I don't believe that you can achieve what you want. They cannot give you uh, whatever you want to achieve. But the bottom line is, um, if you come, you know, you are happy, you, mm. or some are doing some wrong things, you find means to get to him, to them, you know, uh, to change the attitude. Automatically, that will help you instead of, you know, shouting or yelling at them. My director is screaming in my ears. She needs a signed copy of this book. So hopefully when it's launched, um, she's going to get one. Do you promise me that? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but before I go, last question before I go, actually. Um, I want to know, what is the, the best 11? Um, I know it's in the book. Mm. So, for, so for those who uh, are hoping to get a copy of this book, uh, for those who would go to bookshops to, to get them, it's on page 388. Um, mm. That's where you have the best 11 but mm -hmm. run by us who are your the best ever Ghanaian players oh i think i've got all and yeah i know I've got some but descriptions in the book mm. that you know tells why i chose why you them. chose those yeah, players and then um i think uh, there are so many good players who are coming up and uh hopefully uh, we, we should uh, get more mm. but for now i chose about 23 players as a squad for uh, a competition. I see here, very interesting. Um, I wish we had time for this, but I see here you chose Abedipele, you, you chose Anthony Eboa. Uh, knowing the history, it would have been very interesting to know um, why you still stuck with these, these players. But of course, exceptional players to have uh, graced um, you know, Ghanaian football and of course to have won the Black Stars jersey. Thank you very much, Coach Kwesi Apia, for passing through the show. Uh, I've been here with Coach Kwesi Apia. He is uh, the ex-Black Stars coach and also a very, very integral member when writing the history of uh, Ghana football uh, from his playing career all the way through to coaching.